folks, it's Crusader Kings 3 and I'm really excited to jump straight into this game, but of course we are not actually playing vanilla. This beauty right here and beautiful names such as Bjorn Jarnsither and Ivar Bainlauthi are of course only coming your way with CMH. CMH is the biggest mod pack, the most immersive mod pack and exactly what we're going to use today to have some Viking fun. This is the guy right here that we will experience today. It is Rollo of Normandy, the man that came from Norway or Denmark or maybe from somewhere else. History is a bit spotty in these parts. And then of course became the Duke of Normandy. Later having his descendant, you guessed it, William the Conqueror conquer England itself. We are going to make the journey today and much more importantly, if you're playing with CMH, then you will find that there is much more to it than it would be in vanilla CK3. All right, but let's keep the introduction short. What is going on with Rollo and why is he so special? If you're playing with CMH, then you're also playing with Rice, a mod that makes it so that there are so-called aspirations that reward you for doing a particular thing and you can even fulfill bonus objectives. We talked about this in a recent video I did and I mean here it is. These are basically quests. We're going to settle in Normandy by initiating and or becoming involved in the consolidation of Normandy through any means necessary. If you're wondering what this is, we're gonna find out soon enough, but oh my god, yep, they actually made a struggle for Normandy. Now this right here is Rollo's tale, uh, historically speaking we don't know too much about him, but the Christian scholars afterwards were like, ah oh, yes, let me think. He was guided here by God. Yes, 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 when he arrived he was a pagan and he kind of slowed a couple of people but that was actually just God doing it right we're going to of course reenact his life we're going to say we live in Norway right here I love this as well we get some feedback right there we live in Norway and most importantly Konungre Sigurdre snake in the eye of Selundre here is our enemy we're going to say that he indeed killed our brother and I would like to take revenge now, I'm not sure whether we're gonna get that done, but ideally, hey, I would absolutely like to do some kind of blood eagle with this guy. But honestly, tough to say whether that is going to work out, because of course he has a couple more troops than we do. Anyway, we are a great character. We are just, we are brave, and of course we are arrogant, next to being a brilliant strategist and, yep, strong. We are incredibly, incredibly powerful. All right, but for starters, uh, <laughs> right, um... CMH goes a bit further, they also have prowess and leadership as new focuses. My god, there's gonna be a lot in here that neither I nor you know about, so this is gonna be an expiration for both of us here. Vanguard inspiration, ooh, same culture mercenary, holy order higher cost, that is insanely good. Oh, check this out, spoils of war, army movement speed plus 10% and unlock access to the plunder event. What is that all about? Rulers who possess the Spoils of War perk can unlock a special event when they successfully capture their enemy's capital or a county with at least 25 development. That's really high, especially in the early game. These rulers can intensify their plundering of a barony, gaining additional gold and destroying buildings, albeit at the expense of a negative opinion modifier. That is amazing. I really like that. Normally you can't destroy any buildings. But this all of a sudden makes it quite worthwhile. Train with knight interaction. Interaction that allows you to train with your knights to improve your prowess. Oh, I like this mod. I really do. Man, these actually seem like pretty good perk trees right here. Although, of course, we will miss out on a whole bunch of stuff like Gallant right here. But then again, honestly, we're neither a strategist, an overseer or a Gallant. We're most certainly a commander, Vanguard and or Sentinel. Man, I like these trees. I thought that they might actually do stuff that is already covered in Marshall, but this is some pretty cool things right here. I think we're going to go with Vanguard right here. Offense focus gives me natural tread, it gives me advantage. This right here would be prowess and number of knights. Now I'm gonna go with the offense focus. We will try to pursue Vanguard just because I really, really like to train with my knights. And I would also kind of like to go ahead and do some extra plundering. Oh boy, when was the last time that I spent that much time setting an actual focus? Um, you know, there's nothing new here, at least not that I can see. I was pondering playing with Obfuscate, which makes it so that you can't see the traits and such of characters, but I think think that's a bit much, at least for the time being. Available perks. Oh, I already have a perk in Intrigue for some reason. Um, <laughs> you know what? Some extra fertility. Why not? Can't hurt, right? Surely Confederate Partition can't do anything against me. All right, but anyway, we're taking a look at Rolf right here. We're only 20 years old. We have plenty of time and quite frankly, we can't even reach the King of France. We need to make our way maybe right here into Orkney and so on. But also, I just want to consolidate Norway. 
other than that, that means we don't have an heir. We could find a normal spouse. Now, all of these spouses are lowborns. I'm not gonna marry any of them. I would love it if I could actually go ahead and just plunder and steal a couple of women. Because, well, that is Rollo's way until he is God-givenly converting to Catholicism. Oh my god, and we even have a bunch of new decisions here that I personally have never taken. Explore the seas west of Iceland. There's a whole struggle here with Greenland as well. Maybe we're gonna get involved. Honestly, I'm looking at this. This could easily be like three or five videos. There is so much to do with CMH. My god, unite the northern tribes. Oh, this is for Norway. That is so cool. Other than that, I'm not seeing much new things except offer gifts to Svetovit. The mighty idol of Svetovit stands in the great temple located at Cap Arcona on the island of Rana. Oh, that is um, in Pomerania. Those who respect the old gods and send Svetovit fine gifts will perhaps receive this blessing. I am not Slavic. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm not Slavic. But I could obviously still pray to it even without being Slavic. That is very often how religion worked back in the day. They would, for example, look at the Christian God and say, yeah, maybe I will, you know, petition him for his blessings, but obviously I also have my own gods to take care of. We could do that if we are faithful or distinguished enough. And oh my god, we are starting out with pretty good men at arms. I mean, that is a 5 out of 5 Vigman right here and then 3 out of 5 Bondi. Yeah, that is pretty damn strong, uh, which also explains why I actually have a really healthy amount of troops with just one county. I just have a ton of men-at-arms that obviously we need to pay for with prestige, so I can't be caught slacking. We're going to go ahead and conquer and raid as much as we can. Let's start with this guy right here. Ulf, uh, your land is my land. I really am getting the feeling right here now that I will be able to mop this up in absolutely no time, considering the fact that all of my troops are men-at-arms. Even if I meet somebody with a, with a similar troop count, look at that, 864 levies versus mine 255 levies. Yeah, we're gonna absolutely destroy them here, my god. Because, oh, what the hell is this? Uh, this is a full-screen battle view. Oh! Huh. I'm not sure whether I love it or I hate it. It's very informative and I've never seen it actually tick down like this, you know, this clearly. Oh, and it's so convenient. You can tab in and tab out. This mod list has come a long way. Um, wow, okay. All right, and now we can station our other troops, making them even better. Whew, okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and mop up Norway. What do I need for my duchy? I actually need to go into this direction. Okay. Now do keep in mind while we are doing this that I'm obviously not going to stay here, I'm not going to stay a Viking. I will definitely go ahead and actually land in Normandy. Uh, there is an interaction that we can use or we can do it via war. I'm not sure whether war is going to succeed. Um, either way, before we actually hop down there, I would like to make a bit of a name for ourselves. Ideally, we have plenty of children and, for example, conquer these Irish counties and just leave our children behind over there. That would be kind of funny and I think that would also work quite well. Obviously, we're gonna go to Normandy eventually. Huh, and now the commoners are showing up to sell us some snails. And not just that, we actually have the historical context that everybody in Europe used to eat tons of snails, not just the French. Uh, you know what? Bon appétit. I mean, we're gonna bring that tradition down there and we're just gonna keep going with it. Works out for me. All right, and now is as good a chance as any to raise a runestone. We have made plenty of money. Um, I'm gonna go raiding before I actually found the duchy here. But what should we carve? I think the perfect thing to carve right here is that I vanquished Magnus. Magnus, you were a nerd. You weren't really a challenge. Um, everybody should remember that. That's very important to me personally. Now let's check our prison here. Um, I actually can't marry any of these people. You've already been here for 10 months. Maybe I should help you out. You know what, yeah, let's, let's help these two out. These two are just fresh in our uh, prison. Maybe they will be useful going forward. What the hell is this button? Select code education languages. Oh, I remember this. I love this mod playlist. Oh my god. Once we are in France, I can actually set multiple code education languages. Jesus Christ, this is so much further than I remember this to be. Uh, either way, listen, we're now in a position where I can found the duchy. I have taken over all of those, almost all of the locations that we need. We're gonna go raiding after just conquering this last county right here. All right, now the big question is going to be where shall we raid? You best pick a target that is at war so that the troops of the primary person here, the king for example, are not at home. I like this right here. Who are you fighting? That is a relatively big war. We can probably actually even take the holy side. Other than that, everybody seems disgustingly calm. 
Hastine. What, what are you doing? What is going on there? Rhys Salomon right here has basically no troops. Uh, I think we're going to start with Brittany, then go for Asturias, and maybe for France on the way back, if France is at war at that point. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's go to England. Apparently, according to official Christian storytelling, Rollo has a, had a dream that went something like, I should ravage England. I must take all of their women and their land. That is what the Christian God wants. I gotta do what he says, right? So, you know what? England it is. Ah, look at that. God sees the nobility of my heart and guides me to, de to my destiny in Northern France here, and specifically Normandy. Yes, I should own their land. You're completely right. Oh, what the hell happened here? West Sex and East Sex actually split? Maybe I should migrate here instead of Normandy. This is... They're so vulnerable. That is beautiful. It's a child. Is he, is he actually hosting a tournament in Lincoln that he just conquered? <laughs> this is an actual legend. Uh, you know what? I think I should stop by, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna raid your tournament, bro. Is he gonna pop up and kill me with his troops? I, I can't see how he wouldn't be doing that, right? Um, oh, there they are. I don't like that, but it's gonna take them so damn long. I'm actually gonna be gone. It didn't even say how much money I made. I'm, I'm pretty sure I basically made nothing off of this because he just conquered it. But all right, I'm out of here. Cool. And oh, he is trying to take over East Anglia because apparently East Anglia actually won the war against the sons of Ragnar. Ah, uh, they're no longer as powerful as they used to be, huh? Uh, I'm gonna go for Montagu and hope that I can capture his wife because... That would be a good concubine. He actually did it. He actually became the Duke of East Anglia. Normally, he just like conquers a couple of counties and then he's done for, but <laughs> Jesus Christ, okay. Uh, good job, Hastine, my God. Dude, I love raiding in Iberia because it is the most beautiful part of the map, if you ask me, entirely because they added like this kind of stuff. It's just, it's just nice. Let's create a duchy. And uh, with that, we are now set up to hopefully have a wider Diplo range. It's always a bit of a pain. I, I do love playing with restricted Diplo range just because it makes results a bit more realistic. But it also means, yeah, I literally cannot talk to this guy. I hope that I can go for Orkney. Now, what I don't want to forget is that I do want to destroy this guy right here. Um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, wow, he has 5k troops because of his allies. Um... Jovic. Yeah. Whew. Um, all right. You know what? Just out of interest here. First of all, I can go offer gifts to Svetovit. I'm going to go ahead and pray to Svetovit just because I like this image so much. Um, 150 bucks. 75% chance of receiving a beneficial modifier if the Oracle's divination is good. Wait, what? If the divination is good, I only have a 75% chance of getting modifier. <laughs> So if it's normally good, he's just like, I don't know, it doesn't do anything. All right, you know what? I will prepare my offerings and travel to Rana, which, by the way, is this right here, this beautiful location. Right, so I get this already and potentially modifiers if in November they tell me good news. All right, they said, you suck, you get nothing. Um, I'm going to burn that place down. Don't worry about it, okay? Ooh, and believe it or not, I have not yet captured any women that I could actually marry or turn into concubines. However... This guy here is in a civil war, which means I should be able to raid like crazy. Uh, tell me about this. Can I... Oh, I can definitely raid you if I... Where, where do you live? Do you actually live up there? I gotta. I gotta do it. This is what the Christian God wants. Never forget, us capturing the wife of Alfred the Great is exactly what his Christian God wants, okay? <laughs> Beautiful. Huh, what the hell is going on over here? The Abbasids. Ooh. Oh, sponsored conquest by the Ogus Ill. Yeah. Um, the Caliph is gonna get toasted here. Oh, and one thing that I just realized, and I mean, they are struggling. This guy suddenly became independent. Uh, they changed something here in CMH or in one of the mods that comes in CMH because normally in vanilla, they just consistently move the capital away from the struggle and into Damascus because that is technically speaking, the de jure capital of the Abbasids, they made it so that the AI stops doing that in CK3 CMH. So this guy is actually involved in his own struggle. Good for him. <laughs> yep, this right here is definitely what Bavaria should look like in real life. Now, I am really, really happy to see that there's a lot more action going on here in the Carling territory. Although right now, I'm not sure whether they're going to reform anything ever. Um, I do like to see the Bavarians very, very strongly 
who the hell currently technically is the Emperor. We're playing with HRT here as well, the Holy Roman Triumph that makes it so that in 867, even though there is no HRE, legally speaking there was one, historically speaking there was one, uh, the King of England, Louis the Younger, also was the Emperor. Although right now I'm not sure who's technically speaking the Emperor in this mess. Um, I don't think we can access that, that interface, so I will never be able to tell unless we are actually in this location. I assume it's him because he's in, in a direct line with, of course, Louis the Younger. But honestly, I'm not so sure. Oh, no, you know what? This guy right here, Charles II the Bald, is now the Emperor. Oh my god. Um, you can see he actually did the Italian souk, so he went all the way to Rome to get crowned. That is so damn cool, and he is without a doubt the strongest. If we see a French HRE in this playthrough, we might actually have to do several videos. Alright, now I couldn't marry the wife of Alfred the Great because she held a title. Sadly, that was impossible. Let's hope that I can marry his wife. We are rivals. Um, I'm not going to declare war, I'm just going to go raid him. You can see we have plenty of troops now. I would like to capture his wife or something at some point, okay? We just need to have a couple of children. We are 29 now, we can still make this happen, but yeah, we gotta capture somebody. Oh, and perfect, we are also now accessing the plunder events. Let's see how that goes. Ah, yes, a beautiful, <laughs> a beautiful concubine. Oh my god, it's his primary heir. That's why he's worth that much. Um, I'm gonna sacrifice that kid, okay. Let's go home. Yep, yep, yep. Let's plan a bloat. Um, I could have it in any of these locations. Let's hold it right where we are. Doesn't really matter. That just means I don't need to travel. All right, so we could make this festival size pretty big. Honestly, I don't care that much. What I do care about is this right here. I will be designating a chief sacrifice. We are going to sacrifice the son, the primary heir of our rival who supposedly killed our brother. All right, but now that that is taken care of, uh, he can live. I took the lives of his son and his other son. Beautiful story right there. I'm going to go ahead and make my way westwards. I would like to conquer some stuff here in the islands, maybe Iceland, then maybe Ireland and then eventually look towards Normandy. We do have plenty of troops now, I just need to make sure that I actually keep my prestige up. That is going to be the most difficult thing here, I think. Oh my god, this battle interface keeps jump scaring me. It's just like, <laughs> it just pops up out of nowhere, my god. And here is our well-deserved plunder event, Kirkjuvagre Fell. I ride through the streets surrounded by my loyal men. I see the fear and hatred in the eyes of the civilians who know they are at my mercy. You could spare them. We could um, raise it to the ground. Jesus Christ. Control level minus 100. Development progress decreases by 100. Development level goes down by minus 1. Whew. Reduced to ashes. Oh my god. That is awful. Uh, yes, please. Good god. Oh, I captured a woman. Hello. Um, you are now my concubine. Wait a minute. She's pregnant. I think if I make her my concubine, this will technically be counted as my child, despite very obviously not being my child. Let's wait a second, and then we're gonna make her our concubine. I really don't want to game over just because I didn't get to, you know, have children. And look who is showing up, and oh my god, he actually has a better prowess value. He wants to take revenge. Zigurd wants to kill me for sacrificing both of his sons. Uh, let's win this duel. All right, I'm normally good at these duels, but I don't have any weapon, I don't have any armor, you know, at least when it comes to my inventory, and I actually don't have a really good prowess score. <sighs> Let's hope that we can save ourselves here with Viking. Um, yeah, Butchery. You make a show of your cruel skills as a raider. That's right. Oh man, he's already reeling. Um, I'm gonna say taste the wrath of Tur. My form is good, let's go, and I can yet again do the stuff right here. Butchery, oh, come on, we are so close. He's reeling from me, our form is still good. Oh, we've done it! That's incredible! Clever footwork keeps me behind my opponent as he staggers to his feet, and with a well-placed strike, I stab him in the base of the skull. Goodbye, Zigurd. Goodbye, indeed. Woo! <laughs> See you in hell, pal. Oh, and gone is the dream, and it's a completely different dynasty. Gone is the dream, where Charles the Bald founds the Holy Roman Empire. Um, that's awkward for you, but it makes it so that you have no allies and you basically have no troops. I don't think at all that I need to negotiate for the March of Normandy. This is the interaction here that we have, but yeah. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick Varengian adventure. It's gonna be pretty tight and I will need more prestige, so I need to raid a little bit before this. 
But I think I can win this. Look at this guy. He's weak. He has no prestige. He's, oh, he's making a lot of money. All right, you know what? Let's see what we can do. And where better to raid than just in France itself? I'm pretty sure the guy can quite literally not oppose us because yes, he has more troops, but they are all just levies. I, I would demolish him here. I will have to be relatively fast though, because the way I see it, we're looking at a country that can very quickly build up men at arms and then be better than us. Wow. Um, if I kill him, a Carling comes to power, who doesn't really have, I mean, he doesn't have any titles. Do I want to kill him? I could sacrifice him. Oh my god. Can I even host another one so quickly? I can. Oh. <laughs> That's terrible for you, my friend. That is so bad for you. Oh, and while we're here, it looks as though the Danelaw has been founded. In a bit to solidify their personal power, it seems Konungre Halfdan and Kuning Eadulf have signed a devilish treaty, dividing the realm of England between them. Ha, huh. so now we have England right here and we have the Danelaw up there. That is so cool. Whew, okay. Time to make our way to Norway and Normandy here, huh? Oh, what the hell is this? Um, maybe we will see the HRE, huh? They, they seem to be pretty good at unifying this here and obviously it's Bavaria, so they are unbeatable. Let me just take a look at this. How are you doing? Uh, this isn't going so hot. The struggle is still going, although he's no longer involved. What exactly are we looking at here? I assume that we're gonna get the concession struggle ending eventually, but honestly, not that much power here is accrued. It seems as though this struggle will last, uh, you know, at least a bit longer than it normally does in vanilla. Not sure whether this is CMH in uh, exclusive or not. It oh, I actually cannot host the bloat. Uh, we would have to wait for three years. So what that means is that I think I'm just gonna eviscerate this guy, right? I could sell him, but Honestly, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and just execute him. <laughs> this is what you get, pal. You shouldn't have screwed with me. Now he's in charge and oh my god, he has no troops. I assume that is not actually going to change, huh? Okay. Varengian adventure for Normandy. It's time. I really love this idea and obviously right now it is basically just an accident, but I like this idea that after I plunder France, take their king and execute him, they are like, we need to be a bit more inwards. You know what? Barry it is. Don't live directly to this river. Although I can also just enter right here. So you know what? You're not any safer. Let's claim Normandy anyway. Oh, and there's a random Northman army also co coming right here for Flanders. So this entire area will be Northman run if we can get that done. Uh, I like our odds. And oh my god, they just keep running away from me. I, I think I have to siege down the entire duchy just to actually get ticking war score because they are not willing to engage with me. And now I have taken prisoner, the mother of the king of England, who of course is just 16 years old. Uh, remember, Alfred is sitting over here with nothing to show for himself. I think the king of England's mother shall be my concubine. Yes, this is a great idea indeed. And look at that, our cousins are showing the French what it means to fight a Norseman. Um, I love that they actually confronted the 4,000 people up here instead of just my meager 3,000. They got cocky, I guess. And now here we are. The King of France, whose predecessor we sacrificed, is now fighting me and my god, it's only levies. They are so cooked. Look at that. I really wish that we could like sacrifice somebody if we capture anybody good, but I mean, I guess it's better than nothing, okay? The, again, just for the record, this is what Jesus wanted. This is exactly what he had in mind. And look at that. They have nicknamed me the lion. I like that a lot. Noble, fierce, majestic. If the lion is the king of beasts, then your obvious similarity to the animal suggests a bright destiny for you. I mean, look at what we're doing here, right? And we now have our very first heir right here. He was born to Svala, the one and only woman that we ever really captured, uh, besides the mother queen of England, I guess. But yeah, um, Athel Brichter, uh, I mean, you kind of suck. You're very mediocre, a very mediocre child. And this is so rough. This is like the biggest embarrassment that you could ever see. Roi Herbert <laughs> the Lion has been captured by me. And honestly, I gotta do it just because I can, right? We arrive here and I have... There, there should be no questions about who is the true king of these lands. Spoilers, it's not the French. Uh, I'm gonna conquer this. I don't need to plead for any peace. Again, just Jesus wants this, okay? All right, but there it is. Um, what does this mean now? 
You will seize all territory within Roi Raoul's realm that is part of the Ducasse of Normandy. Ricky of Thrandelok is destroyed. Landed family will receive spare conquered counties. All old held titles will be destroyed or given independence. Right. Um, nothing else there. Can we exchange a hostage? Is, is he interested in this? I could take the Prince of France. You're kidding. This is... <laughs> I'm going to take the primary heir of France and give you my bastard. Why not? Oh, yeah, no, why not? I mean, this sounds like a great idea, right? Look at that. I love. Wow. He actually let me do that. He actually let me do that. Now, the big question that I have, does the struggle start now that I am here? Or do I need to be a vassal of his? Because I'm not sure about this. What happened to the locations that we had? This was given to the Irish. I held that stuff. And then this, none of this stuff stayed in my family. None of it. What is my son doing? I guess he's just traveling to... Uh, oh, yeah. He's traveling all the way to the court because he was in Norway, so he has to make the way all on his own. Oh, that's rough, buddy. Now, his primary heir, where's he... Oh, he's going to Norway because I held that when we when we did the peace treaty. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we have arrived in Normandy. I have claimed everything there is to claim. Oh, and I think to actually start the struggle, I will have to establish Norman culture. Um, It's not saying that anywhere. But I'm going to go ahead and assume that I have to do that. Normandy rises right there, which just means that I need to take this one county from my good friend right here in Brittany. I'm going to do that, and then we're going to take a look at what is possible for us here. Oh my god, these guys have actual castles here. That is, that is going to be very annoying for us. And now I'm going to be honest. I actually love this hostage ex exchange that we did there. We gave them our child, yes, but it's a child born to a concubine. He gave us his firstborn son. And let's be real here. We just annihilated him. We killed his predecessor. And we killed the predecessor of the predecessor. Obviously, he's willing to give us Prince Ord right here. The pact is in place. Beautiful. I, I love that. I love the entire hostage, uh, hostage exchange after wars. This is just so much more than anything that we did prior to this. And you know what? I am going to raise Brittany's capital. Raise it to the ground. But now having done that... Oh, and I got their dynasty banner. Let's go. Having done that, I can actually end this war. Can I make it so that I... Oh, does he not... I already have his child. Um... I'm gonna negotiate her release for a hook. Yes. Okay, I don't I don't know whether that will do anything for us, but my idea here is if I enforce my demands, right? Can I demand her now? I can. But he would be very unwilling to do it. Right. I mean, it's his only daughter. All right, now I don't know how this properly works because he says that he doesn't want to do it, but apparently he will do it. Um, if I can also get his daughter as a hostage, we have the children of France and Brittany right here in our court. Uh, I'm gonna enforce my demands. Does she now? Oh my god, yeah. She's totally gonna become a hostage of ours. That is insane. I love that mechanic. Honestly, that is definitely something really cool that I, until now, never really utilized. Anyway, let's take a look at this. So now I can establish Norman culture. Before we do anything else, let's just raise a runestone. Um, I would like to absolutely remember the king that we just defeated. I'm going to build this stone as close to, yeah, there's this, Avranché. That is what we just conquered. We're going to build this stone in memory of our victory over Brittany. And now that we have done all of the nonsense, um, I'm going to establish culture, right? Normandy rises. I love it. I love it so much. The consolidation of Normandy. During the era when the Northmen used to ravage France's coasts, a notable Norse warlord by the name of Rolf the Lion established a great realm in Normandy, whether through conquest, intrigue, politics, or other means. For Rolf and his successors, however, taking over Normandy is one thing, controlling it is another. The duchy is an unstable frontier, full of opportunity, as Northmen settlers mix with local Franks and Bretons to forge a new Norman's identity. You're one of the involved participants in the consolidation of Normandy. The region is currently in a phase of adventure. Your actions and those of the other participants will determine the future, phase of the struggle and its ending. Whew. Okay, rise of the Normans, indeed. Right. Oh, and as we do it, we have the hostage, the Prince of France, ask us, who the hell am I? I'm simply no longer connected with Francois culture, and I feel I'd be alien to my father. I feel so much more comfortable with the Norman's practices I've picked up here. He has truly become one of us. Um, I am your uncle. We'll begin question who he owes his loyalty to. Yes, yes, that's exactly right. And look at that, Rollo's triumph. Who could have guessed that I have finally arrived at the promised land? Those prophetic dreams I had long ago were perhaps right after all. 
Perhaps Odin real, uh, really was communicating to me about my destiny. There is much work to be done, however, for though Normandy may be a fertile land full of promise, it is also a tempestuous frontier, and my authority here only stretches so far. One day, we, the F. Murrah dynasty, will fully consolidate our rules, uh, rule over these lands and beyond. I'm going to say, I am here for I chose my own destiny, and I'm not going to convert to Christianity. At least not right away. I'm not subject to France. We didn't do it via the interaction. We did it by virtue of our very own power. Prince Rolf of Normandy, right? Let's take a look at this. Um, I think this should fire soon, right? Or like, basically right away. We should be getting the renown at the very least. We should be getting money. But what is much more important is that we are now a part of the struggle. What are we looking at here? We are looking at three different struggle endings. We have the Norman Conquest, where if you conquer Greater Normandy, we gain a unique kingdom. We can do this only if um, we reach the early medieval era, if we have the Historia Normanorum, and of course if we completely control one of these. Greater Normandy, Northern France here, England. Let's take a look at Greater Normandy because I do like this kingdom. It's just this coastline. So we can create a kingdom here in the channel, we can completely assimilate, which just makes it so that we're basically becoming closer and closer to the French right here. And then right here we have the outsider's yoke. I think this is if uh, somebody just basically takes over, right? No county normally is a ruler who is Norman culture or of a culture descended from Norman, right? If the French push us back yet again. Obviously, I would like to gun for the Norman conquest. That sounds amazing. On top of that, our culture is not what it, you know, always is in vanilla. Because take a look at this. Legacy of the Northmen. This tradition will upgrade to the adventurers and aristocrats tradition if the decision to commission the Historia Nomonorum is taken, so we can upgrade this. Rulers can use the Norman adventure Casus Belli in the early and high medieval eras. So starting in the early medieval era, we can move on and actually make our way to Italy. I like that. Duchy tier and lower rulers may raid overseas regardless of government, and the craven trade drains monthly prestige. Trade such as weak or delicate are looked down upon, and rulers, if allowed by gender law, can have up to one spouse and one concubine. I can have a concubine? I can! That's incredible. Okay, anyway, what we are looking at is us landing here in northern France, not being subservient to the king of France, and potentially uh, going even further. Now for the time being, I will stay with my old heathen religion, but I may turn sooner rather than later. We have a pretty strong ally right here, we are pretty strong ourselves, and France is uniquely weak. Oh my god, he looks so worn out. I mean, we just destroyed him, so I understand what's going on with him, okay? Either way, what this now means is that we are in a tremendously amazing position for a second video, where we will deal with this struggle right here and hopefully actually conquer like around this area so that I can found Greater Normandy, if we can. I would like to end the struggle, of course, with the Norman Conquest. We just actually need to reach the early medieval era and so on. Let me check this, right? Early medieval, um, how far are we from this? Starting in 900, we got all the research I think that we need. Is this is this true? Yes. Okay, so this isn't actually far away at all. We can start conquering and once we're done, we should be roughly in that time frame. Whew. We have the son of the King of France, the daughter of the King of Bur uh, Burgundy of Brittany and our son is in France, but don't worry about it too much. I love that. Now last but not least, what does the struggle actually do for us? Going on Norman adventures costs less prestige, even for those not involved in the consolidation of Normandy. Oh, right. It is similar to the Varangian adventure, but with some differences, and is available to cultures with a legacy of the Northmen uh, or adventurers and aristocrats traditions. That is so cool. So we can become Christian and feudal and settled and still do all of the adventuring like they did historically speaking. The Normans were active in Spain and uh, in uh, uh, Italy and so on. So that is really damn cool. What else is going on here? We can learn a new language and that provides prestige. Okay, that is really, really cool. Uh, interfaith marriages are available between involved characters. Oh, so in Normandy itself, we can even have Christian vassals. Interesting. Levy reinforcement rate plus 5%. Inviting Norman settlers costs less gold. Oh, is that a decision? My God, there is so much to be done here. Are you serious? Right, this commission, I'm going to take a look at that in the next video. But I am yet to marry. Yeah, we, we don't really have any good candidates here. Maybe I have to convert to Catholicism. Hey, listen, let me know in the comments whether you think we should convert and what exactly should we do? Should we gun for Italy or should we try to reform Greater Normandy? Either way, I'll see you later, alligator.